Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I am your host, Kevin, and today we're going to be bringing this 1968 F100 farm truck back to life. Let's get to it. So right now, behind the scenes of this video, we're in the process of rebuilding the Le Mans once again for another show this weekend. And of course, we wait until the last minute to start. So we are really short on time, but I'm still gonna try to get this knocked out today so that you guys have a video this week. We're not gonna do a very in-depth revival, but I'm gonna do whatever I can to teach you guys whatever I can teach you while getting this going. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig in and see exactly what we're looking at. So this right here, like I mentioned, is a 68 F100 which if I remember right means the handle is on the right side of the hood. There we go. Under the hood we have ourselves a Ford FE. According to the air cleaner it is a 360 but who knows if that's correct. This could be a 352, 360 or maybe even a 390 but chances are being an F100 it's probably a 360 unfortunately. If this sticker wasn't painted over I'd have a more definitive answer. Right off the bat I can see that we're missing an exhaust manifold, so that's going to be a problem. We're also missing some plug wires, so here they are. Can't quite tell if our motor turns over because we have a clutch fan, but from what I was told this thing was running at some point. On this side of the engine bay I see a new alternator, or relatively new. It does have some corrosion, so I'd put that at eh, maybe five, six, seven years old. and. I replaced voltage regulator as well, so. On top of that, it looks like we even have a somewhat fairly recent starter solenoid in the last 10 years. So I would venture to say this probably was running when it was parked. What do you think, Bryn? Is that a pretty good looking interior? It's nasty. It's nasty? <laughs> we got some work to do? Yeah. That we do. It is nasty. Not quite as bad as the bed, though. So a little bit of backstory, this is actually the second truck I purchased from this property from my buddy Jed, who owns Central Iowa Diesel Performance. He's a good friend of mine and a great guy, and if you're in the area and you need diesel work done, that is the most badass, reputable shop you can go to. People bring their trucks hundreds of miles for these guys to work on it, and there's absolutely a reason. It's because they only have to do it once. These guys don't mess up, and they get your shit right the first time. If you missed it, this is actually the second truck we pulled off this property. You can see the other one in this video right here. I was planning to come back and pick this one up a lot sooner than I ended up actually doing, but nonetheless, we're here. So let's go ahead and dig around the interior of this truck and see what we can find. Right away, I'm seeing that I forgot to mention this earlier. This is actually a Ranger trim level which means this thing is loaded. On top of the usual Ranger things, such as the wood in the dash and on the doors and the full door card, this truck actually has AC, which is incredible. And you never see this old of a truck with AC, so I'm really excited about that. I'm hoping this thing runs pretty good, because if it does, I'm gonna drive it. This truck is in excellent condition because it came from Oklahoma, as you can tell by all the red dirt there. The body is remarkably straight. There is no rust whatsoever. The interior is in excellent shape, the dash pad looks great, the seat is immaculate, the door cards are all still present and accounted for, everything is looking pretty damn nice inside. My favorite part though, is that we got a bunch of 8 tracks laying on the ground here. I think this is actually the first time I've ever found any 8 tracks in a car. We have the best of Charlie Pride, sounds like Herb Alpert, Tijuana Brass, Casino Royale, not sure what that one is. Story of Elvis, Volume 2, the best of Bob Willis, and of course, The Beatles, Part 2. Oh, and Fiddler on the Roof, I guess. Funny enough, there's no 8-track uh, player in this truck, at least that I can find, so don't know what these are from. Looks like right here we have a replacement exhaust manifold, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say the old one probably broke, <laughs> judging by that. Someone was probably in the process of fixing this truck because this looks to be exhaust manifold gaskets. Here's a speaker cover for something. Looks like we got some parkour wires here. A few extra tail lights. Not sure if these are even for this truck. And floor mats. And here we go. Receipts. This is what we want to see. 2017. Maybe this has been in Iowa for longer than I thought. In the back of the truck, looks like it's uh, been acquiring some garbage for some time now and looks like we got a little bit of cleaning to do once we get this thing up and running. Well now we know what it's all about, let's get a battery in it and see if it spins over. 
I apologize, a bit of background noise today. We got a highway right here and a bunch of kids over here. This goes to show that we're doing real stuff in real environments. Okay, I got some sparks, so something must be turned on. Oh, I think the key was on. Let's see if anything works. Hey, <laughs> wow, that's a lot of dirt. All right, we got power. Let's see if she cranks. All right, if I was a dipstick, where would I be? Besides in my fourth year of running a YouTube channel. Before we crank, there's a couple things we want to do. Check the oil and get this air filter off to make sure there's nothing in our intake that we're going to suck into the motor. That would be the big sad, and we don't like the big sad. Well, that's a whole different flavor of big sad I wasn't anticipating. That is the greasiest, grossest carburetor I think I've ever seen. That's probably because this motor has a lot of blow by and it's being blown on top of the entire carburetor because it hooks up to that air intake. However, it does move, so that's good. Oil is perfectly to the full mark. It actually looks pretty decent too. All right, let's see if it cranks. Well, yeah, this thing spins over, so that is good. I'm gonna go ahead at this point and disconnect our coil lead and see if we have any spark. Found this push button floating around in my consumables box, which is where I keep all my like, oil and wire and shit for revival. So I'm gonna slap this in there and make life a little easy for me today. Okay. So I have our center lead from the distributor disconnected. I'm gonna find a nice sturdy ground. This is the coil wire. Comes off the coil, nice short little guy. I'm gonna put that up next to the ground, keep my hand away from both the back of the boot and the front where the electrode is. Also try not to jam your elbows or anything into the truck because that completes the circuit. If you don't touch it, even less of a chance it'll not get shocked. It's a little weak, but we do have spark. Uh, this is a point system, so let me just pop this cap off quick and take a look at our points, see if I can clean them up, make life a little better for this thing. So this right here is our points armature, and right here, these two little gray pieces are our points. What you can sometimes get away with is grabbing that outer armature and rubbing the points together like this, but uh, this one seems to be fairly new and really tight, and that base plate moves for some reason, so I can't really get away with that one here. So it looks like I'm going to have to go get the sandpaper and do it right. Dang it. Today we're working out of our Tang Tools portable tool kit. I custom built this off Tang's website by selecting nine modular trays of my own desire and put them in this to build the ultimate mobile tool kit. And since this thing is so incredibly portable, I literally always have it with me. Especially anytime we're in a classic car, I throw this, a booster pack, and a case of water in the back of the trunk for cheap insurance that I can make it to wherever I want to go. And whatever you can't get, you can fit into these neat little design trays, which is where I keep a little piece of sandpaper to clean off my points if anything happens on the road or when we're doing revivals. Honestly, anymore, this is pretty much all I use for revivals. You can take a look at this kit for yourself at tangtoolsusa.com. All right, back under the hood, I got my sandpaper and this nail I found on the fender. Wait a minute, this is not a nail. This is a, uh, this is a brake shoe hold down pin. Well, that's the only piece of hardware over there. What else is over here? Oh, hey. A set of old points. This is what most sets of old corroded points look like. And this is a, a whole points assembly if you guys are ever curious. What I was saying earlier is sometimes you can reach in there and just wiggle them like this. And it'll burn off a bit of that corrosion. Just enough to make it work. So I'll open this up with this nail and sneak this sandpaper in there and go to town. I'm going to clean up the top of the rotor right here. See if there's any corrosion right there. There's a little, but I can pretty much just wipe it off. That guy back in there, take a peek at our cap. Looks brand new. Slap that back on. Make sure they only go on one way. If they don't, they're probably broken. Turn the key back on and hit the go button. intermittent ouch my head right on the hood hinge <laughs> I'm seeing an intermittent spark here and I've seen this once before and I had suspicions about this since the fact that I wasn't able to wiggle anything 
Our dwell on the points may not be set right. It might be too loose or too tight. And therefore, the points are not behaving correctly and cutting that ground to the coil, which is what causes the spark. So let's watch those points and see what they're doing. Well, they seem to be working just fine. Let's see if I can get it to land on a lobe. Well, our, our gap looks fine, and we seem to be sparking pretty healthy. Maybe a little more sandpaper treatment. As you can see in here, there's a spark in that gap, so everything under here looks fine. One more real quick little thing I can do for assurance is take my knife and scrape the points here in the cap. And just to triple check that we got a good clean surface. Blowing the extra crap out of there. I take it back, there's plenty of charge in that coil. I don't even know what I hit, but it hurt. There we go. Well, it worked for a second, what the hell? And the coil potatoed. Got a loose wire over here. Should have just kept the weak spark, it's better than none. Someone sent me a points file in the mail, and whoever did that, thank you very much. I forgot to bring it. <laughs> I really wish I had it right now. You know, they worked when I got here, but they're just a little weak. I was like, yes, son of a god. This is what happens when I'm short on time. Testing. Good, strong spark. All right. By now, we should have built oil pressure with Ow, son of a not the hood latch again. This truck hates me. By now we should have moved enough oil from cranking that I'm not worried about firing this thing. So let's go ahead and get some fuel down its throat and see what it does. I can't find my can that I would usually mix uh, oil and gas in and essentially make a heavy two stroke to do this with. So back to the classic. Before anyone cries about it, it's just fine. Just remember I only have four spark plug wires hooked up, but I just want to see if it makes a pop noise. Here we go. Tried the littlest bit on like one of them cylinders. Oh, yes, I lost spark again. Yep. God darn it, those points are raw and right. All right. I'm gonna see if I can free those damn things out to work more than three seconds. Hook up the other four plug wires and see if this thing pops off just a little bit. I don't want to run it too long because there's no header. And without a header, running engines burn exhaust valves. So don't run an engine without headers. But before I do all the work of putting a header on, I do want to see if this motor has a rod knock or something stupid where I can just stop now. All right, we got all eight spark plug wires back on. One of them is completely junk, uh, but it's just sitting over there, so again, not gonna run this very long, just wanna see that it makes proper noises. Come on, girl. Cause that uh, that wasn't me. Oh yeah, there's an accelerator pump. Ow, my freaking head on the hood latch again. We have fuel. We have a functional carburetor. It looks like, despite that thing just being a greasy pile of junk. Okay, there we go. I just hooked up a very important circuit. Uh, let's see if it works. Yes, yes, the horn works. Woo! This is gonna be a great truck. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. 
Let's get that exhaust gasket and put that sucker on the other side and see if we can get our exhaust hooked back up. All right, just took a trip to the hardware store and got, well, hardware from the store. And now I'm going to go ahead and see what I can do to clean these gasket surfaces up the tiniest little bit. Get that gasket in there and bolt this on. This is going to be a nightmare and I need to just get it done. So I'm not going to film it. I'll just let you guys skip all the pain that I'm going to go through of bolting this on. And then we'll be back when it's done. You lucky bastards. Okay, well that actually wasn't nearly as bad as I anticipated. It only took me about 20 minutes to get the header on. The hard part was getting the uh, downpipe on. Uh, but yeah, I'm all filthy and greasy and gooey. But, that's on. So, let's get the new spark plug wires on this truck and fire it up and see how it runs. Who the heck are you? Mook! What are you doing here? Everybody wants a mook hug. You sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Mookers. Hello. What's you up to? I was visiting animal shelters and I decided to see if you were still out here hecking around. Oh, that's right. You dropped the, the rest of the boxes off today. Yeah. Heck yeah. I pet some kitties. You didn't bring any more dogs or cats home this time, did you? Because last time we dropped that box, we brought home a dog. <laughs> Put it back. Yeah, I have one more stop to make today. Are they still accepting donations for your cause there of rescuing animals and helping support those who cannot afford it? Yeah. Of course! Kevin, can you put a link in your description? Yeah, I'll put it on screen too. What's the website, Mook? The Lexi's Legacy Foundation.org. It looks like this. I'm showing you guys because there's two that are spelled very similarly. That's the one that I volunteer my time for. Mook volunteers to help run some aspects of the nonprofit down yonder. And in the first shot video, she mentioned something. And you guys donated a whole mess of money, and then a few people and companies matched it. and. A lot of really, really good things happen because of that. So thank you guys for your support. And if you haven't had a chance to donate or support and you would like to, there you go. Or just go check out what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's find another plug wire and get this together. All right, back to animals. All right, we got a new plug wire on there. Should have all eight cylinders firing now. Let's give this thing a couple of pumps. All right, just cough through the carb, so we're gonna uh, double check this firing order, just to be sure. Classic Kevin fashion, I got three and seven switched around. I seem to only do that on FEs, so. Yeah, that's like the fifth time this thing's got me in the head. All right, let's try it again. on this thing keep dropping out on me. What are your deal? Did you just say what are your deal? I think I did. <laughs> it's not my day man. It's not my day. It's definitely a Monday. Oh my god. Seeing that these points are just not willing to work with me, I'm gonna put the old ones that I found in the fender back in. I cleaned them up with some sandpaper. They look pretty decent. We'll see if they work. Alright, new points. Let's give it a go. noise on this side, but running. Let's see if I got an oil can. No oil gauge or light, so I don't know. Sounds like we got a definite sizable amount of lifter tick over here I need to check into before we go much farther, so let's pop this valve cover off. Man, I picked a shitty day to do this. It's about to get stinky. 
One thing about the Ford FE is they do not like push rods and they love to bend them. So let's see what the damage is. I already feel RTV, so someone's been in here before. Just let all the smoke out. <laughs> all the it's like wires. Smoke. You're not supposed to let smoke out of your wires. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Look how rusty it is. Wow. At the same time, it's just nasty as hell. That is from sitting for a very long time. You had some crap fall in back there. Oh heck. I don't think it's gonna hurt it. Maybe it'll clean it out when it's bouncing around. Yeah. That is disgusting. Like, I'm surprised this motor spins over. Which one of you is the noisy bastards? That one. So, yeah, long story short, the stuff shouldn't move this far. Uh, <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's a bent push rod. It's going that way down the cylinder. So this would also explain the heavy misfire we had. Uh, as you can see, that's the angle the push rod should be traveling. But well, instead, it's going way off to the left. So that one has come out of the lifter cup. I don't know if that's because it's bent or what, but we'll uh, pop this rocket rail off and get that guy out of there and see what's going on. I don't even know if this motor is moving oil to the top. These are so crusty. Holy hell. Dink. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Good old FE. Never yeah. fails. Sweet. Well, I tore a Duramax apart and all of them looked like that once. Really? Yeah. What even happens? Uh, that one, it's the cam seized up inside the block. Oh, really? Yeah. Bad bearings? It was a, yeah, well, it was just a bad job overall. The kid that put it together didn't know what he was doing. See, that's that's why I said earlier, when you guys want your shit done correct the first time, <laughs> you go to Central Iowa Diesel. This is Jet, by the way. Hi. So the question is, why is this bent? And I'm seeing two marks right here that look pretty fresh, and a couple more scrapes that look pretty fresh. So I think this might have just happened. And it might be because we have a stuck valve. We're gonna go find ourselves a soft hammer and see what we can find out. Yep, that's a sticky valve right there. Now crank it over and push it back up. Yep. And then we'll <laughs> knock it down again. I'll get some PV blaster in there and we'll do the old hammer it down, roll it over, hammer it down, roll it over until that sucker's freed up. Right, here we go. Yay! Get the piston out of the way. Go ahead and give her a whack. bottomed out. Ha <laughs> There it is. Great success. A little more oil on it, but it should be good. And now after it. Try it again. Hell yeah. Not quite as springy as the others, but <laughs> springy nonetheless. <laughs> Looking at everything else under that valve cover and the condition of everything, that's I'd say that's on par. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Alright. Put that rocker shaft back on, button everything back up, and try it again. Who knew all this trash would be so useful? Girl, it stinks. It's pretty good at that. Ow. The moth just flew out of that. <laughs> Sacred moth. Getting close. It's good enough for what we're doing. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead, sir. Let's see. If you're good. Good. It passed. This one doesn't move very much. It's taller than all the others for some reason. Oh, it's That's probably a white cam load right there. We'll get a valve cover back on this, hook up our uh, sparkly wires, and try it again. All right, let's see how she does now. Hit it, sir. noise. 
from over there that wasn't there a second ago, but... Champ. We don't need that. Yep, that's good. <laughs> Just drop that out of the frame. A little bit of blow by. Did you hear that? Yeah. No, that thud. Here's Rodney. <laughs> So our power valve's definitely shot, like without question, which requires me to pull the carb to do that, so dilemma, dilemma. I can pull the carb, replace the power valve, fix the extra rich issue where it's blowing black smoke, then I guarantee it doesn't idle because it's too lean. What's the carburetor? I'm a decent mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just put a tire on the back and see if it moves around the yard. Yeah, and do a burnout. Ooh, I like that. You got yeah. a patch of concrete over here, don't you? I do. Where you did a burnout with the Thunderbird. Oh yeah, there's a link, check it out. Yeah. Let's do that one. That sounds like more fun and less time, which I don't have, so yeah, bingo. Burnout time. So some of you who are uh, very observant may have noticed that we have a flat tire on this truck. I planned ahead and brought a tire, but those of you who are still observant will notice it too is flat, so I need to go air this up before we can uh, put it on the truck, obviously. Which means I need to take it somewhere and I really don't want to carry it. So I think Jed said he's got a solution for me. Let's see what he's got. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> well, I'll see you around. I'll see you later. Well, we got air in our tire, but I can, I can hear it promptly leaving our tire, so. on the dipstick so get a couple quarts of transmission fluid in this and try it again. Two quarts of type F let's see if that makes a difference. This is actually the same thing the last 68 we revived did. It would move for like 10 feet. But what? <laughs> trying to show them the robustness of the dipstick. Of the dipstick. That is a beefy unit right there. That's a good like what three eighths inch dipstick? It's probably three eighths of an inch wide and sixteenth of an inch thick. We could beat someone with that. Yeah, it would hurt. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a demonstration here today. All right, let's see if that makes a difference. Haha, <laughs> 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 you fail. I hear a hissing. It's coming from this tire. Oh, goody. Another tire with a hole in it. <laughs> Contact. God damn. This 
motor's toast. Right rear tire is completely flat. Yep. So I'm going to help you do a burnout. Okay. Don't question me, just, just wait. Since this truck is refusing to live and its condition is getting literally worse and worse by the second, it doesn't even idle anymore, we had to call on the reinforcements to help do our little burnout. Come apart and hit the bed sides, I'm calling this one a win. My neighbor's wondering what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably like, what? We're, we're filming a YouTube video. That's normal, everything's fine. It's fine. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go get the trailer because there's no way in hell this thing's gonna make it out of the yard. The carburetor's junk, the motor's junk. Uh, the rear end seems to work, the brakes seem okay. Transmission seems to go into gear and stay there. I'm gonna go get the trailer, uh, load it up, and we'll take this thing somewhere and give it a bath. And just like that, we've made it to the shop where we can give this thing a proper bath. Something I never thought to look up because I was in such a rush all day is the license plate. This son of a gun was last licensed in 06, which means that this truck has been off the road for 15 years. And I'd believe it. From the mismatched tires that were probably thrown on the whole there so they could move it around to the amount of stuff all over the paint, I would say this truck has definitely been off the road for 15 years. Someone definitely tried to get it running in 2017, they just didn't make it very far. We, however, were able to make it run, at which point it made itself unrun. <laughs> Some people might say, ah, oh, why did you beat on that truck so much? Uh, look, we have plans for this truck, and the motor and transmission are not included in those plans, so they do not matter to me, and they're junk. At least the motor is. Trans might still be good, might still be able to use that, we'll see. But without further ado, let's go ahead and pull out the pressure washer and get this thing cleaned up. That's a nice 
tailgate. Started things off with a piss jar. Good. Looks like we're gonna have equal parts random pieces of metal or rock and garbage. Woohoo! Happy feet too. Right in the garbage. Miniature baseball bat. Put this one by the door. Alright, now that I got all the nasty shit out, we can rinse this truck out. It smells awful. It smells like rotting leaves and stuff. Might just let that run for a little bit. It seems to be washing out plenty of shit, so time for a beer. Today's beer is brought to you by Bush Light Apple. It's like Red's Apple Ale at half battery. For that reason, it's better. Oh, there's a big old hole up there. Yeah. That's why you don't put rubber mats in your floor. Oh, and there was plywood under it, too. Awesome. It would have been perfect if the damn rubber mat wasn't in it. It's getting dark and I'm running out of lights, so I had to bring it out in the car wash, but I'll see what we can make happen. Battery's running low, so I'm gonna finish this up and we'll take a look at how it looks at the end. All right, the main camera died, but I got my cell phone. Here it is. The hood has some excellent patina. The grill looks great. We got a Ranger emblem here that just fell down, fixed. The sides came out great. Beautiful patina through the white here. Not usually a fan of white patina. Usually a light blue is my like go-to color. But this truck pulls it off really, really well. As you can see, our bed is pretty damn rusty. So I'm going to have to get a new center section for that. Or a bunch of license plates or something. And hope for the best. Uh, yeah. This truck came out freaking beautiful. I love it already. And we're just starting. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this really quick rushed episode of Junkyard Digs. We have some great stuff coming here soon, so stick around. Make sure you subscribe to see when that comes out. As for this truck, it's not for sale. I have plans for it. I've needed to pick up a built big block Ford my neighbors had for sale for a while now, and I know where to put it. So make sure you guys subscribe to see that. If you like the video, leave a like. So make sure you guys subscribe to see that. If you like the video, leave a like. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to Mook and all of our friends. I will see you right here next week on Junkyard Digs. Peace.